Tonight, a fire emergency in the Hunter as wild weather sweeps across New South Wales. Released and home, Renee Lawrence flies into Newcastle after walking free in Bali. A man found not guilty of killing high-ranking policeman Colin Winchester, having spent 19 years in jail for the crime. And Golden Holden, a surprise for the retiring Craig Lowndes at the Newcastle 500. This is NBN News with Natasha Bayersdorf and Paul Lobb. Good evening. First tonight, the bushfire emergency unfolding across the Hunter with gusty conditions whipping up two blazes this afternoon. Reporter Sam Burberry joins us live from the newsroom. Sam, which areas are being impacted? Paul, two significant blazes are testing emergency services. One near Madawi to the north of Newcastle, another near Western. The Madawi fire began in bushland on the southern side of Richardson Road. Both fires currently remain at emergency level with conditions unlikely to ease tonight. Paul. Thank you, Sam. Sam Burberry reporting there. The spotlight was on Renee Lawrence today as she touched down in Australia following her release from a Bali jail. It's the return she's been waiting for for nearly 14 years, with the relieved drug smuggler making a tight-lipped dash straight for home in Newcastle. Renee Lawrence lost in transit after arriving in Brisbane and in no mood to chat about her life and times as a Bali jailbird. Mark Burrows, NBN News. A gasp ran through a packed courtroom today when the verdict was read out at the retrial of David Eastman, who spent almost 20 years in jail for the murder of one of Australia's top police officers. Colin Winchester was shot twice in the head outside his Canberra home in 1989. Today, Mr Eastman was found not guilty. Hiding his face for the last time, David Eastman always claimed he was innocent and today a 12-member jury agreed. Early Walsh, NBN News. There were health warnings across New South Wales today as a dust storm swept in from the state's far west. The red haze and strong wind sparked dozens of call-outs for people with breathing problems. A morning on the harbour with a rose-tinted sky as Sydney was covered in a thick, murky mist. While strong winds met, it was blustery on the bridge. The dust storm made its presence felt across the Hunter, accompanied by westerly winds gusting to more than 80 kilometres an hour. Air quality conditions in the upper Hunter reached hazardous levels by midday. Trees and power lines were brought down by the wild weather, closing some roads. And it wasn't quite the dust storm the central coast was expecting. A yellow haze lingered over the southern end of the region throughout the day, a far cry from the red skies of 2009. The Weather Bureau indicates the murkiness should shift by morning as a cold front pushes east. We'll have all your weather details later in the bulletin. A man has been charged with a string of property and driving offences, including ramming into police cars on the central coast. Police had been searching for 24-year-old Drew Robson for three weeks before he was spotted behind the wheel of an alleged stolen car at East Gosford. He was later arrested at Budgiewoy. He fronted Wyong local court today and will remain behind bars to face a magistrate again next Wednesday. There are fears a new patient inquiry desk could put the safety of Gosford Hospital staff at risk. Employees have suffered threats and abuse from patients in the past and say so this new desk affords them little protection. Abuse, threats and spitting. These are just some of the nasty behaviours the Health Services Union says staff have been forced to endure at Gosford Hospital's patient inquiries counter. Sarah Yuliano, NBN News. Supercars great Craig Lowndes has received a surprise from his team on the eve of the Newcastle 500. The event will be his swan song as a full-time driver and Hunter fans are also keen to give him a stirring send-off. Unwrapping a supercar surprise, a golden Holden for a golden boy of racing. Doing groundbreaking research while juggling family commitments and teaching can pose a challenge for academics, female ones in particular. That's why the University of Newcastle today awarded seven more women fellow research fellowships to help staff reach their full potential. Intelligent and ambitious, 
These women are, with some assistance from the University of Newcastle, preparing to shatter glass ceilings. Sam Burbury, MBN News. Still to come, Mitch Hughes will have all the latest in sport. And after the break... Rugby League star Greg Inglis pleads guilty to drink driving. A father accused of throwing his nine-month-old daughter into water at Tweed Heads before she washed up on a Gold Coast beach has faced court on a murder charge. Residents have held an emotional memorial for the little girl, but some argued the tribute was disrespectful. In the waters where the little girl allegedly died, hand-picked posies left by a group of locals who feel guilty they didn't do more to help. Cleaner and more reliable power. That's the promise from Bill Shorten as he pledges $15 billion to switch to renewables and overhaul the nation's transmission network. Households will also be offered help to install their own batteries. Labor calls it a renewables revolution, a war on emissions, prices and power generation after years of policy and action and stalemate. It's a trip that will soon be very familiar to Jared Hayne, with a 30-year-old reporting to Sydney's Castle Hill Police Station today as part of his strict bail conditions. Hayne will need to do the same thing three days a week after being charged with the aggravated sexual assault of a 26-year-old woman in The Hunter. Now to Gavin Morris for a quick look at the weather. And Gav, it's been a day of extremes across the country. Yes, just wow, it certainly has. First of all, beautiful rain yesterday and last night. 40 to 60 millimetres widespread across the farming lands of the northwest. Very much needed. Then there's today, the skies turning blood red, the dust storms rolling in and reaching the coastal communities around Newcastle, stealing the sunshine and wreaking havoc for asthma sufferers. It hasn't been a pretty day with the howling winds, total fire bans in place for the hunter. But what about the alpine? districts it's an extraordinarily different story the skies are white pure white wild blizzards and snowstorms continue as I speak it is going to settle down in the coming days it's going to be dry it's going to be a little bit cooler but the winds remaining locked in place particularly for the greater hunter and over the mountain areas over the next 24 hours all of your local details headed your way a little later thank you Gav coming up Never before seen interview, Michael Schumacher in his own words weeks before his tragic accident. And the pregnant Duchess rolls up her sleeves to help at a community kitchen. Duchesses Kate and Meghan have gone on royal duty, visiting two London charities. For the mum-to-be, it was a return to what's become a passion project, a kitchen that's helped survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire. They're the sisters-in-law, doing it by themselves. Meghan and Kate, both in Burgundy, both out in London at charities close to their heart. To finance and the Australian stock market clawed back yesterday's losses with the All Ords finishing up nearly 50 points. West Farmers shares continued their fall down 2% while Woolworths was up slightly. The major banks were also higher. To commodities and gold is up, oil is trading lower. And the Australian dollar is down against the US dollar, the euro and the yen. It's a network of termite mounds so big it can be seen from space. Researchers have discovered the gigantic complex of 200 million mounds in northeast Brazil. They believe it could be up to 4,000 years old and cover an area the size of Great Britain. You can at them, that's impressive, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> and you wouldn't want to build a house near there. No, nowhere near it. It's time for sport now with Mitch Hughes. And Mitch, a new face or two in the Australian test team. Absolutely, and one will get top billing. Thanks, team. Coming up after the break, Marcus Harris set to open the batting against India. And Triple Eight's treat for the retiring Craig Lowndes.
Australia's cricket selectors appear fed up with the stuttering performances of recent times, today choosing two fresh faces for the four-test series against India. At the top of the list, new opening batsman Marcus Harris, who forced his way in by averaging 87 in Sheffield Shield. Bat in hand and in the proudest polo shirt he's ever worn after taking a call from the chairman of selectors. Aussies Mark Leishman and Cameron Smith are tied for the lead at the World Cup of Golf after a scintillating first round in Melbourne. The pair shot a 10 under par 62 to be level with the teams from England and Korea. Leishman did have one off moment missing an easy putt on the 15th. For the second straight year, the Supercars Championship will be decided in Newcastle. But Scott McLaughlin and Shane Van Gisbergen's battle is almost taking a back seat as the series' most popular driver prepares for his farewell. Craig Lowndes is driving off into the golden years of retirement. Now he's got a car to match. Magenta Shores golfer Dimi Papadatos is still on a high after finishing in the top three at the Australian Open over the weekend. NBN News caught up with the 27-year-old during a brief visit to the Central Coast this week. From a disqualification to a spot at the British Open in the space of a few weeks. Returning to the Newcastle 500 and Springfield's Luke King is just a few days out from the biggest race of his career. He's been hot on the heels of the championship leader all year. Just 48 points separate Luke King and title rival Tim Brooke heading into Newcastle before the racing gets underway on Saturday. Sky Hull, NBN News. Paul and Tash, that's our look at sport. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. Gav has the weather for us next. Gavin Morris joins us now with the weather and Gav, it's been a gusty, dusty day. Yes, a little reminiscent of 2009, not as severe, but certainly up there. Uh, this evening's weather shot is from space. The dust storm seen from our weather satellites. We did not have this weather satellite in space during 2009, but it gives us that incredible detail of the dust storm as it made its way across New South Wales. Rain, beautiful rain. It'd be nice to have had a piece of this. 40 to 60 beautiful millimetres, but look at the color. Off line. You can literally see the Hunter Valley right there. As expected, we didn't get anything. None of that goodness, I'm afraid. Okay, so the rain band is gone. The dust storms are on the top of this. It's still going to be dusty. There's plenty of dust in the atmosphere. It's still moving through overnight. And tomorrow morning, it'll probably still be a little bit hazy. But then we're going to have inner moving as we move towards the weekend. This is an intense low. It is deep and it is powerful. And it is causing wild blizzard conditions across the alpine areas and the very strong winds are going to continue overnight and throughout tomorrow and they love to whistle down the valley there's nothing there to slow them down and that's why the valley is such a windy place to live uh, in the west we've got a low that is not as intense but it's causing storms for perth the heat is back on straight away for the alice storms return to the north still warm for brisbane sydney will be cleaner throughout tomorrow and winter has returned to the southeast. In for a local look. First of all, the temperatures reached today. Uh, underneath that red haze, we had temperatures reach the high 20s. It was dusty and there were a lot of particles in the atmosphere apart from moisture. Hardly anything. Generally, less than 15% humidity. It was a very dry, dangerous wind and that's why the fires just exploded this afternoon and continue tonight. It's going to be a tough fight for our fireys because these winds will continue overnight and throughout tomorrow. There's no relief in sight. There's no rain, there's no moisture, there's no humidity. It is going to be a dry air mass that will continue right throughout the nighttime hours and into tomorrow, which will be windy yet again. Temperature-wise, slightly cooler than today, but not by much. A degree or two for most, but otherwise, we're still going to get up there into the mid to high 20s uh, throughout the valley, the mid 20s throughout the upper 
Papa Hunter. So these strong winds continuing for another 24 hours at least. The swell, it's up, but it's being held down now by those very strong westerly winds. So the seas choppy, three metres. Tomorrow morning, the high tides at nine, dropping to the low in the afternoon at about 3.26. Sunrise at about 20 to 6 and back to bed at 20 to 8. Full moon coming up tomorrow night. It is going to be a comfortable, beautiful weekend. The winds will settle, the air will be cleaner, and it's going to be very, very comfortable indeed. Back into a long, dry run, I'm afraid, for the Upper Hunter with the heat returning during the middle of next week. Similar story for the Central Coast. Comfortable temperatures continuing as the winds settle over the weekend. For surfers, this morning was all time. It was beautiful as expected. Uh, this is before the winds got up, uh, but it was busy out there. The water temperature is awesome in. There was a lovely three feet, solid three feet, and it was glassed off. It's going to be a nice number of days of surfing. Tomorrow, the winds, the westerly, still strong, but as the low pulls out, we'll have plenty of swell over the weekend, and the winds will want back off. So it is a good, beautiful late November run for waves. Thank you, Gav. Before we go, an update on the bushfire situation in the Hunter and the blaze at Port Stephens remains at emergency level. It's being driven towards salt ash by strong wind. Residents are being warned it's too late to leave. Richardson Road, Madawi Road and Nelson Bay Road are closed. Meanwhile, the fire at Weston has been downgraded to watch and act. It continues to burn in a southeasterly direction. Thankfully, it has passed Curry Curry Hospital. People in the Pelham Main area are being advised to seek shelter if the fire impacts on properties. And that's our bulletin for this evening. The Today Show will have the latest headlines from 5.30am. From all of us here. Good night. Good night.